Hello everybody, I'm Joseph Jones. I am a composer and a conductor, and I wanted to start a small series of videos in which I introduce to you and explain a bit about some of my music. I hope this will be helpful for conductors and musicians uh, who might be interested in programming and performing my music, but also those uh, in the audience. Uh, those who might be familiar with my music and are interested in knowing more about it, and those who maybe are new to classical music in general, and particularly new music, um, and want to get a little bit of insight into the composer's process and what's behind the music. So let's dive right in. I decided to start with a piece I composed in 2020. Um, it is based on a work by Shakespeare, the famous speech by Mark Antony from Julius Caesar. Uh, a little bit of history on this, uh, both to me and the work itself. Shakespeare has exerted a profound influence on unhappy high schoolers everywhere. <laughs> um, but also, of course, on people who love theater, people who love drama, poetry, literature, the human spirit. And he has had an influence on composers throughout history. Uh, Tchaikovsky and Prokofiev, for example, both set Romeo and Juliet. Um, Tchaikovsky as a tone poem, work for orchestra. Uh, Prokofiev as a ballet. One small example. And as I was thinking through my projects in 2020, which some of you may know, um, others may not, was sort of a renaissance year for me as a composer. I had not written anything in about 12 years. And when the pandemic hit, I had nothing else to do and I found my voice again. Uh, so this piece was composed in August 2020. And it was meant to be the first movement in a four movement Shakespeare symphony, each movement dedicated to and inspired by a different work of Shakespeare. Well, long story short, um, the first two planned movements took on lives of their own and became independent pieces. So the idea for a symphonic suite or a proper symphony was scrapped, but the two existing pieces uh, which were written back to back, Opus 36, Lend Me Your Ears, which I'm explaining now, um, and Opus 37, um, which I may come back to in a later video, survive. So, Opus 36. So this piece is a funeral march. It is built around Mark Antony's speech from Julius Caesar. Um, at which Antony is speaking about Caesar uh, to the gathered crowd and trying to ostensibly eulogize his murdered friend. But he's really trying to rile them up. It's a brilliant example of oratory and rhetoric. And for those who love language and drama and poetry and winning arguments, it is well worth studying. So I would like to quickly read this. Um, please bear in mind that I am not in any way, shape, or form a trained Shakespearean actor, but I will try and do this justice. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is often turred with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus hath told you Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously hath Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus and the rest, for Brutus is an honorable man, so are they all, all honorable men. Come I to speak in Caesar's funeral. He was my friend, faithful and just to me. 
But Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. He hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransoms did the general coffers fell. Did this in Caesar seem ambitious? When that the poor have cried, Caesar hath wept. Ambition should be made of sterner stuff, yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and Brutus is an honorable man. You all did see that on the looper call, I thrice presented him a kingly crown, which he did thrice refuse. Was this ambition? Yet Brutus says he was ambitious, and sure, he is an honorable man. I speak not to disprove what Brutus spoke, but I am to speak what I do know. You all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? O oh, judgment, thou art fled brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. Bear with me. My heart is in the coffin there with Caesar, and I must pause till it come back to me. So, powerful words, powerfully assembled, hopefully adequately delivered. Um, but I wanted to find a way to deliver this through music. So a quick aside before we get to the music. For those who are less familiar with classical music, um, this piece is a form of what we call program music, which means that it is directly inspired by, and, and I guess based on, some extra musical idea, as opposed to most symphonies or sonatas or um, instrumental pieces, uh, which we would call absolute music, which is music that exists for its own sake. Program music seeks to uh, paint imagery, tell a story, a direct narrative, uh, so on and so forth. It is, in this case, very closely tied to the text. Now, in some ways, this can be extremely freeing for the composer, in other ways, incredibly restrictive. Um, the composer has to find a way to honor the source material, um, but still be an effective composer. Uh, the music has to tell a story, but it still has to be good music. And I know I'm getting into some dangerous territory here because that is such a subjective standard. What is good music, good, bad, especially when talking about art, um, uh, tends to lead to either rolling eyes or rolling heads. Um, but in this case, I mean that the music still has to do its job. It still has to be musically sound. It still has to um, be well-written, cohesive musically, um, but also, again, honor the source material, which is, you know, which was penned by one of the greatest artists, writers of all time. So this is for orchestra. Um, I call for three of each woodwind instrument, flute, oboe, clarinet, and bassoon, including piccolo, English horn, bass clarinet, and contrabassoon. And four horns, three trumpets, three trombones, and tuba, timpani, um, and then string orchestra. So a pretty standard romantic 20th century uh, complement of orchestral forces. So I decided to open with the opening text, Friends, Romans, Countrymen, which are given to the brass in a powerful, striking fanfare.
And now, the evil that men do lives after them, the good often turned with their bones. So let it be with Caesar. So these first two statements were really transliterations. The, the melody, the orchestra, uh, is standing in directly for the text. It is drawn out. Um, it is dramatic. Uh, one would certainly not speak this way on the stage. But it is a direct transliteration of the text itself. Well, if I did this for the entire piece, it would probably be about 40 or 50 minutes long. And even though I'm not really given to brevity, as some of you know, <clears throat> thank you to Mahler and Bruckner for that inspiration. Um, I didn't want the first movement, because remember at this point, I'm thinking this is the first of four movements, um, to be that long. So I started moving away at this point from transliteration into imagery. So now comes eulogy. He is remembering his friend. He was my, my friend, faithful and just to me. Um, and this is moving away more and more into pure imagery and representation. Now comes a foray into motif. A motif, um, for those who are new, is um, the, the term for uh, a, a short, often recurring theme. Um, it's used throughout classical music, of course, but it's also used a lot in movie music. Think of the uh, uh, John Williams scores. Um, Star Wars and Indiana Jones, where there are very specific melodic fragments that are associated with a character, an idea, that's motif. So I developed this short chorale um, for the text, but Brutus is an honorable man, and it recurs a few times throughout this. Here's the first statement of this chorale. So we're at a funeral. It's been slow and pensive so far. Now we have an interesting line. Uh, he hath brought many captives home to Rome, whose ransom did the general coffers fill. So this is a not so subtle allusion to Caesar the general, to the warfare of the Roman Empire. And what is more appropriate than that? 
uh, for that than a martial theme. So here we have a change in tempo and the introduction of this very militant march. <laughs> Now we pull back a bit, and here's a bit about three offers on the loop recall. Um, this is the introduction, but it is a small three-sectional uh, phrase in the piece. So this has been building and building and building, and without getting too much into the, the structure of this and the rhetoric and all of that brilliance, which Shakespearean scholars can speak about much more eloquently than I could, um, this has been building. Um, and it's becoming clear to the reader, to the audience member, that uh, Mark Antony is not simply eulogizing his friend, but he is planting ideas in the heads of this, this gathering, which is quickly becoming a mob. Um, and he has this exhortation, O judgment, thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. See if you can hear that here. exhausting. And now he pauses. I must pause and uh, my heart is in the coffin there with Caesar. I must pause until it returned to me. So here I decided to take a bit of an uh, artistic liberty. Uh, this is the, the coda um, to end the, move, the, the piece, the movement. Um, and the opening material returns, this time accompanied by the sort of stereotypical uh, triplet figure, uh, slow march, funeral, triplet figure. <laughs> And there it is. So this work is about 12 and a half, 13 minutes long. Um, I believe it could slot just about anywhere in a concert program, but I think it would make a really suitable opener. Um, it has yet to be premiered, performed, recorded. So arts administrators, conductors, and others out there, if you're looking for something new, please let me know. I will be happy to share a score in parts, um, and I will link to the MIDI score on YouTube below as well. I'm very interested to hear people's thoughts on this piece, and I'm very happy to have gotten to take a look back on this um, years after composing it and reacquaint myself. Uh, this was Opus 36 again composed in August of 2020. My most recent piece was Opus 129. Um, so there's been a lot of music written since then, but this is a, a piece, one of my first uh, big orchestral pieces. And I still find it really fulfilling and exciting. Um, and I'm really glad to share it with all of you watching. So thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for my next videos.